Good job, honey. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> hey, daddy's filming the video right now, okay? Okay. I'll come in, in a little bit. I love you. you. Congratulations on pooping in the potty. I'm really proud of you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's great. Working from home, man. <laughs> All right, the DJI Action 2 came out recently and it clearly took some design inspiration from the Insta360 GO 2. So today I'm gonna put these two cameras head to head. We're gonna do a little bit of comparison, kind of walk through the pros and the cons of each camera. And by the end of today, hopefully help you make a decision if you were looking to buy one of these cameras, which camera is best for you. And of the two companies, it was actually Insta360 that reached out and asked me to do this comparison, which seems crazy because kind of top line specs, when you look at the two cameras on paper, this guy beats it in most categories. But then when you dive more into the features of the two cameras, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a different story because it's not so much an apples to apples comparison as it seems. Again, we're gonna go through the pros and cons of each and hopefully figure out which one is best for you. Before I take them out for some comparison footage and some audio tests, let's actually just look at the cameras themselves because they're both, they're both quite interesting. The Action 2 comes in at 57 grams. They went with an aluminum body on this guy. They put a single button on top. There is a screen on the back and on that front bit there is the lens, notably with no removable lens cover. There's no removable lens cover on the Action 2. I still think that's crazy. We'll talk more about that in a little bit here. Then when you look over at the Go 2, it is a all plastic body. It doesn't have a screen on the back or anything like that. It has one button as well. It's right here. And that lens, it has a removable lens cover. So if anything happens to this lens, I just pop it off. I pop a new one on there and we are good to go. So a different form factor, obviously, but I Again, it seems so odd that the Action 2 went with that non-removable lens cover because by being this small, they're obviously kind of targeting that FPV world. Mount this on your camera and you could fly all sorts of places because it's so lightweight, which is what a ton of people do with the Go 2. Now, one thing with the FPV world is you crash a lot. It happens. So durability of these two cameras is really important. And one of those pieces is the lens. If you crack or scratch this lens, you have to send it back to DJI and wait until they send you a new one. But with the Go 2, I can have three and four of these extra little lenses that are super cheap, just chilling on my bag. So if I pop it out and I go, ah, I dropped it and it scratched. It's a real easy fix to, to get the lens cover replaced. All action cameras should have removable lens covers. That's just that seems so obvious at this point. But then come the mods because the DJI has that battery mod and screen mod. This is the screen mod here. These two magnetically click together. And then now I have a front screen on my camera. I have a USB-C port and I have an SD card slot. So both these cameras come with built-in memory, but this allows you to put an SD card slot in there and expand the memory, which is super useful because this only comes with 32 gigabytes of built-in memory, 22 of which is usable. And that is not a lot of internal storage. You pretty much need this mod on there and an SD card in there if you're gonna be doing any sort of kind of activity where you're gonna go out and you're gonna film for a while. 22 gigs, you are gonna go through very, very quickly. And then this setup here with the mod on there now weighs 118 grams. So it does get a little bit heavier, kind of more like a normal action camera. Now the Go 2 doesn't have a battery mod per se, but it has a case that acts as a case a battery charger. So this piece is like a battery mod essentially. Then the case also acts as a way to change settings on the camera. And then while the camera's out of it, this acts as a wireless remote control. So I can have the camera mounted on somewhere else, use this as a wireless remote control and start and stop recording from my wireless remote. So definitely a whole different iteration of kind of a, a case battery mod unit. This kind of all in one thing. I can just toss this thing in my bag. I pull it out. It is a battery. It's how I charge it, it has a USB-C. It also has a quarter 20 mount on it. This case has probably been one of the killer features of the Go 2. Notably though, this does not allow you to put an SD card into this case, but the internal storage on the Go 2 is now 64 gigabytes. This is the new 64 gigabyte version. So 64 gigabytes of built-in versus 32 gigabytes of built-in on the Action 2. And again, on the Action 2, only 22 of that's usable. On this guy, 58 of the 64 is usable. So it's actually over double the storage on this guy. And that built-in storage is important to me because I do a lot of water sports. I do a lot of things where I need my camera to be waterproof and only this bit of the Go 2 is waterproof. This piece is not. And for the Action 2, 
only this piece is waterproof and none of the mods are waterproof. So if I click this thing on there and I'm saying, oh, I have a built-in SD card of 128 gigabytes. No, you don't. If you want to go out surfing, you only have built-in 22 gigabytes. So definitely for anyone out there that's gonna be using these cameras for water sports, if you're gonna go wakeboarding or even snowboarding, I would be pretty sketched out to have this thing snowboarding and get snow in the SD card slot or snow in the USB-C port. If I'm snowboarding, I will only be using the camera like this. On this guy, having a little bit extra built-in is gonna be awesome because same thing, if I'm gonna be doing any sort of water sports or snowboarding, I will only be using this piece and I will not risk getting wet or getting snow in there and then that snow melting and being at all. So both cameras are waterproof, but their, their external mods are not. Okay, that's all great. That's the cameras, that's their little mods. Let's see how these two cameras actually compare side by side, outside, outdoors, getting some real life footage with these things. Let's see what they look like and let's see what they sound like. All right, there we go. Okay, I have been going through a ton of footage. I put all the footage side by side so that I could watch it together and see how each camera did in different lighting scenarios. And it was a lot closer than I thought. I thought that the Action 2 at 4K would look significantly better than the Go 2. And there was a lot of times looking at it where I had to remind myself which was which. I still think the Action 2 looks a little bit better with the 4K, but it's close. We're gonna play a little game here. I will play you like five or six clips side by side and I'll play it first and you won't know what it is. And then, and then I'll pop up which camera is which. You guess along the way. See how many of these you can get right. How many you can guess which one's the Action 2 and which one's the Go 2. be honest how many of them did you actually get right i was i think on a big screen like on my on my computer monitor at full screen i can tell the difference but when it was small in my edit window it was really difficult to tell the difference so i imagine if you're watching this today on your phone it's gonna be a lot harder to tell the difference but if you're on like a 4k monitor if you're watching this on your tv for some reason uh you might be able to see the difference okay next up is audio quick audio test between the two cameras all right here's a great audio test right now the go to is obviously all by itself it has one microphone and the action 2 is currently all by itself i have the screen mod right here which means it also only has one microphone out of both cameras sound with a ton of background noise these these waves crashing on these rocks it creates a lot of noise how much do they isolate just my voice let's add this in here and see how much that changes things okay now the dji action 2 has all four of those microphones in place how does that sound versus the Go 2? The Go 2 still only has that one microphone, it doesn't have anything else. I've kind of thought about maybe putting like a little wind muff over both of these mics. So how does it sound with a lot of background noise? There's not a ton of wind right now, but if there's a little bit of wind, enough kind of just that breeze coming off the ocean. There is a lot of background wave noise. How do they, uh, how do, they do picking up just my voice? The audio was actually pretty surprising to me as well. So built into these cameras, this guy has one microphone as well as this guy, one microphone. But then when you clip the Action 2 onto the screen mod, now it has four microphones. But I, I kind of thought it sounded better when it was just one microphone. When I added the screen mod on there, I felt like it picked up a lot more of kind of what was going on around me and it didn't prioritize my voice. And compared to the Go 2, I would say the microphones built into these guys, just a single mic, pretty on par with each other. I am I'm never impressed with action camera microphones. Okay, onto the stabilization. And the first thing that we need to talk about is that both of these cameras can do 360 degree horizon leveling. They just do it a little bit differently from each other. So one interesting thing about these two cameras, the Go One was the first camera that you could spin like 360 degrees and the horizon would stay locked. The Go Two obviously still carries that. And now DJI brought that in, but on DJI, you can't do it in 4K. So this is 4K on the DJI, obviously still 1440 on the Go 2. It holds the horizon level for just a little bit on the rock steady, but then if you go too far, the horizon flips. Now I'm gonna switch into 2.7K on the Action 2, and then I'll show you that it can do, it can do what the Go 2 can also do. 
All right, so now we are in Horizon Steady on the action. So you can see how much it cropped in there. The go-to obviously just stays nice and wide. It can do the 360 degree rollover now and the horizon stays right side up. Now the go-to always does that. It's just always on if you're in the pro video mode and the DJI Action 2, you drop down to 2.7K, you crop in quite a bit and then you do get into this horizon steady mode. So again, the Action 2 only does that horizon leveling when you drop it down to 2.7K. It doesn't do it in 4K. In 4K, you just get rock steady, which is like stabilization on par with GoPros. And then in 2.7K, you can do the full 360, which is what the Go 2 always does in 1440p, but it's always in that mode as long as you're shooting in pro video mode, which again, it's the only mode that I shoot in when I shoot with the Go 2. And that's for one very important reason that I'll get to in just a minute here. But as far as regular stabilization goes between these two, like if you're just gonna go out and you're gonna walk around with this thing, maybe you're gonna run or you're gonna chase somebody as they're doing something and you're gonna run behind them. What does that look like? I did a quick stabilization test just literally running with these two cameras out in front of me. And from that test, you can see both are just crazy good at stabilization. Both of them look like I'm on a gimbal as I'm, I'm, I wasn't trying at all. I was just running and my hand was like, gah, 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 gah. And they just, they just lock in the world. It looks crazy. I can't believe what action cameras can do these days. And while I didn't show it so much in that clip from longer term testing between these two cameras, I can tell you that the go-to stabilization is, it's just better because it's using that 360 degree world at all times to stabilize. Whereas this guy in 4K, you can only kind of go, you can go so far before all of a sudden the world does start turning. Whereas this guy, you can be running and then you could like jump and your hand twists and it actually still stays level. And then my last test between these two cameras, I hopped over into slow motion mode. And when I say hopped into slow motion mode, I literally mean hopped. And from that test, you can see that the Action 2 is doing slow motion at 4K 120, whereas the Go 2 does it at 1080 120. The Go 2 still looks good, but, but the Action does look better. Okay, so pros and cons to both of these cameras. That's, that's kind of what this video is all about. The Go 2 is lighter, it's significantly cheaper, has over double the internal memory, and has that removable lens cover. And then the Action 2 has higher resolution, it can go up to 4K 120, and you get a screen on the back and front if you get that screen combo kit. But there's one feature that, that I really haven't talked too much about on the Go 2 yet, and for me, it is the Go 2's killer feature, and that is that you can change the aspect ratio in post. If I shoot in pro video mode on the Go 2, I can bring that file onto my mobile app or onto my desktop app, and then I can take one clip and I can export it as a 16 by 9 horizontal video. And then I can take the same clip and I can export it as a 9 by 16 vertical video, and for me, Oh, that is huge. Because when I go out shooting, I don't always know, I don't always know where this content's gonna go. Am I shooting this for YouTube? Am I shooting it for my long-term usage? In that case, I want 16 by nine. Or do I wanna throw this to Instagram? Do I wanna kinda show this thing off on my Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook? If that's the case, then I wanna shoot in nine by 16, and that sucks to have to choose. Okay, lots of pros and cons for these two cameras. Again, I don't think it's about which camera is best, but more which camera is best for you. If you have a bunch of money laying around, you want the highest frame rate possible, you want a screen on your camera, Action 2 is the camera for you. And if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, you're looking for something that's lighter, something that has double the storage as this guy, maybe you do a lot of water sports and that internal storage means a lot to you, or maybe changing the aspect ratio in post means a lot to you, Ah, the Insta360 Go 2 is the right camera for you. I'm gonna keep testing both of these cameras, see if I have any any kind of realizations about either of them as I'm using them, but, but I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below which of these two cameras would you go for and why. Tell me tell me the actual use case that you're using the camera in because I think, I think that's probably one of the more important things. I wanna know what you guys think, and uh, as always, thank you so much for hanging out, watching this video, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Good job, honey, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> hey, daddy's filming a video right now, okay? Okay. I'll come in, in a little bit, I love you. you. Congratulations on pooping in the potty, I'm really proud of you. Say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>
That's great. Working from home, man. 